So I'm a young girl growing up in the other half of the world. I was blessed to have a clear dream of who I want to be. I am a very curious person, uh, believing that I can be an important person one day. I dream of being able to leave something in life before the day I die. Wanting to be a scientist, the path is not optimistic where I came from. With political, financial, and social issues, the research conditions in my hometown was very limiting. I am just one person, and waiting for the condition to change was not what I chose. I decided to go somewhere else and start contributing to science as soon as I could. I came to Canada, leaving everything behind, chasing my dream. As most people can tell, I have a fair amount of confidence. I hardly regret my decisions. I believe that I always have my own reasons for every decision that I made in the past, and it is very easy for us to forget those reasons when time flies. We, of course, think differently at the present, but our own decisions should be respected. Flexibility is important to adapt to recent change in life, but respecting our own thoughts can make significant differences. I have some issues with material dependent, but my true personal collection is not enormous. I have a collection of journals and fountain pens that I really love. Journaling has been one of the best things happening in my life. I learned to be more self-aware, how to manage my angers, emotions, and how to deal with exterior impacts over the years thanks to that habit. I also have a beloved body pillow that I refuse to let go of. Well, Growing up, I always have a tough time fitting in while also not having the desire to do so. I tend to avoid socializing and gathering. However, I do feel lonely from time to time, and it was one of the significant issues bothering my life. I have dealt with this for my entire life, and I eventually stopped actively trying to solve the problem, since I learned to find happiness without fitting in. I was lucky enough to have people who decided to be part of my life, even when I did not try my best to make the effort. I came to Canada with not much expectations. I already knew about the issues that I'm mentioning here, but I did not have many choices. I had a strong idea of who I want to become, an interest to do science research, and the burning heart of youth. I came here knowing clearly what I'm looking for, and my core need is met. Because of that, I decided to stay, and I'm almost satisfied with my life. As I said, relatively speaking, I'm easily satisfied. I asked for education and research opportunities, and I got those. I'm happy with where I am going with my professional life and my progress chasing the role model that I want to become. My social situation, on the other hand, did not get any better. In fact, it kind of got worse. It's was hard enough to me uh, to fit in where I was born, and I am talking about where people generally look and live the same way I do. I was always the weird kid, and I grew up to be a weird girl. It took me two weeks after coming to Canada and moving into a university dorm to realize that it would not be any different, and I, again, would not fit in. It was not really that traumatizing or hurtful since it is not surprising. And I was the one who did not do any work to be part of any group. I do not think I can blame anyone for being alone beside myself. However, the different situations make me recognize several things. 
So recently, I was asked if I feel like this is my home and if I feel like I belong here. I don't think so. Of course, I can say my small unit is my home because I made quite a lot of effort to make it a comfortable place. But for anything on a larger scale, I would not claim it's at home. I define home as where I look for when I'm sad, tired, angry, or hungry. <laughs> I'm always more or less an outsider. But where I came from, there are still more places that I can claim as my home than just a small room. The city is filled with my favorite foods and with places where I can comfortably hide myself. For the sense of belonging, this is what gets seriously worse. I found myself having significantly different beliefs, values, and point of views about most social topics compared to my peers. Combining with an unfamiliar cultural and social standpoint, I realized I have to explain myself for how I do certain things, how I eat, how I act, etc. I do not feel accepted with those questions. I understand that we are different, but I do not believe that one is necessarily better than the other. And in that case, I do not appreciate the strange look or the questions implying that I am doing what I'm doing is weird or in some cases not correct. I usually have time with myself as a procrastinator. I believe that I understand why people do those things. And since I did not have any expectations about these issues, I am not bothered too much by it. However, I find it bothers others who come from diverse backgrounds. And I personally think that these are something that should be improved later on. We are living in the era of technology and we have more exposure to other cultures and backgrounds than ever. And the level of acceptance here is honestly disappointing to me. I think I could be quite sensitive about this given my personal issue. I do not actively trying to be part of something anymore, I think. But I still have the tendency to notice the acceptance implied by people's languages and actions. People are very welcoming and nice here, but the barrier is still there. I guess I decided to talk about this hoping that the barrier of difference can be blurred soon someday. I got used to being by myself, but it does not mean that I do not occasionally feel lonely. When something goes wrong with my studying and research, other issues that usually do not bother me that much can be magnified significantly. Well, during those times, I spend quite some time thinking about the current situation. I feel bad about the fact that there are generations of people um, from different backgrounds who have to give up so much to get something that I want that is so basic. The desire is usually not something big or unimaginable. Most of the time, it can be freedom or better health care or better educations or a better paid job or a more peaceful place. All of those mentioned, in my opinion, are so basic and simple. Many people have to choose to give up their homeland, their extended family, their own culture and community, etc., just to get those so-called simple things. I do not think those who never leave where they grew up can utterly understand the feeling of those who do. I do not think they would generally regret moving since most of the things they are looking for are actually here. But the pain and the loss that they have is something that is too large to be ignored. I eventually ended up having a friend that, and that was completely unexpected. Interestingly, 
as a person who usually have issue dealing with different opinions and criticism, she has been the best friend that I have, even with different point of views. Our sleepovers were always filled with discussions and arguments about some random topics that we pick up, and we are always completely good after every discussion. She and her family makes me feel welcome, and it is great to be part of something again. I started to socialize more and have more courage to express express my own thoughts, even though it can be different. I had been denying the fact that I, as a normal social creature, also needed to socialize. And it is great to have someone to pull you out of that. I also have a small group of friends um, sharing similar interests with me, and I found that I can be in my own skin around them. A group of brilliant nerds. I still hesitate every time I heard about any gathering, but I never felt bad hanging out with that group of people. We share about the world, about our research, our ideas, our crazy questions. We argue about the most boring topic that most people don't want to talk about. With great diversity, I find people treating everyone else the same, no matter where we came from or how we look. There's something that I never thought that I would need in life. I guess dealing with hysteria issues that you cannot do much about becomes a bit better when you finally find somewhere or someone who lets you be you without questions, without judgments.